have their friends over at any time, and there's always something that you can just go and do immediately. So that's worked out really great. So it's always here. You can do volleyball or basketball the way we've got it set up. And so, and then also um, a few of the neighbors' kids will call. Sometimes we'll just start showing up. So you know, it's real spontaneous. We have a pool here, so you kind of combine the two. We got the field, so there's a lot of things you can do here. But uh, we even bought a Gatorade cooler to set on the wall, so they got water out there. Because sometimes I've had as many as 12 kids playing basketball one time out here. One of the things we had to weigh out was how long we'd be able to use it. So, you know, again, about 10 years, we get a good solid 10 years out of them using it. And so that part you have to weigh in for your investment. And then of course. Um, the way it looks and where it's positioned, if, if we went to sell the house tomorrow, it would be a benefit to anybody that has kids if they saw the school. Uh, one of their teachers has a home court that's just concrete. So it's two hoops, one on each end of concrete, and if it's damp at all, down you go. And when it's dry, if you go down, it tears you to pieces, right? So I knew that I didn't want to start at that level. I obviously wanted something nicer, and then as I did some of my own research, I had some tiles sent to me from other companies and stuff, and when I looked at it, I'm all like, it's awful. There's probably two tips. One, really take your time and think about what you're wanting to do with it for it, so that you have exactly what you want. But I think the, the best thing that we did was went and visited the other courts. And I recommend taking your kids, taking a ball, letting them feel it. I remember when Lori was there, she'd never actually seen one before my wife. So she got to hit it with the ball, and she's like, oh, okay, this isn't at all what I thought it was. We got a little more excited about it. The kids played on it the whole time in the neighborhood. And then we were able to ask that person what he had planned, what he had liked, what he did different. We got to see the light. So that going and visiting other courts, I think, is probably the smartest thing we did. It works for us, really, is all of a sudden we will just stop whatever we're doing and we'll come play usually a little volleyball. I'm not a very good basketball player, but I can pull my own with that volume. And we sometimes we're even step in that. We'll just pepper with each other. You know, come hang out, put the radio out here, get the music going a little bit, bring our drinks out. And so we steal time together with the courts when we do. So they have their time that they can get, and then Lori and I steal time with them. Our representative had built numerous courts, so had a lot of hands-on information on questions that we had specifically, you know, should we do this, should we not do that, and how that, you know, about the fence height, uh, how far the fence should go around, how many hoops we should have, where the sun should be. You know, there were a lot of things that we hadn't thought about at all, but that relationship really tied together. To do a project like this, you have to have somebody who knows what they're doing, and you obviously do not. So you tie those two things together with what you want to accomplish, and what they've already accomplished, and then there it is.